Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is our review for Big Top Bunny and with me today is Bruno himself, Matt Hunter. <laughs> Say hi. Hello Australian. Hey, hello Russian. <laughs> G'day mate. <laughs> As mentioned, this is Big Top Bunny, released on the 1st of December 1951. It had a Blue Ribbon reissue sometime in 1963. It's the 635th in the series, and is directed by Bob McKimson. You can find this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 1 DVD set. There is a new remaster out there on HD. At the time of this recording, it's not really available to see, so hopefully it'll come on disc soon. On the cough, collector's choice cough... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is excellent, by the way. Go buy that. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Now, this cartoon's under copyright, so I can't show you the full thing here, but essentially, if you haven't seen it before, we're at a circus where we see Bruno the bear. He's now made to do his show with a talented rabbit. I mean, he's basically a snobby star. You know, it's all about him. And, of course, Bruno isn't happy about Bugs, you know, sharing the spotlight with him. So, yeah, he tries to get rid of Bugs to have the sole spotlight again. As for trivia, there's really only two that I can see. Now, I believe Bruno the bear is is a parody of Russian actor Akin Tamarov. Yeah, um, you might have seen him in films that came after this, A Touch of Evil and the original Ocean's Eleven. He was, you know, he's a Russian actor or Armenian. It's a little bit vague yeah. on that, that front. Eastern European Slavic. Exactly. Um, I mean, I mean, I know for certain he's not from Slob. He's not Slob Slobkovian. <laughs> How does the country say Slobkovian? <laughs> At least we know he's not from there. One radio reference. The whole. Don't you be was a radio reference from the radio show by the same name, Don't You Believe It? And it was from the late 30s to the early 40s. So that makes this a, maybe a dated reference by this point, given this show was 1951. Maybe it was just a saying in, in the lexicon that people were using at the time. I don't know. Yeah. An example of it being a reference that's long forgotten, but it's, it's funny in its own right. Most people remember it from Tom and Jerry. Yes. Because there's a Tom and Jerry cartoon where, where Tom does that. You know, everybody remembers that, and it's, it's funny by itself, you know, even if you don't get the reference. This cartoon, that's kind of the only real reference to anything in this cartoon. It's pretty straightforward. It's just Bugs versus this bear. The bear doesn't want to share the circus with Bugs and tries to kill him, and Bugs yep. is a step ahead of him the whole time. That's right. Um, I just remember this one was shown a whole lot on TV, back when they were shown on TV a whole lot. Cartoon Network in particular played this one to death, and it even had a VHS release. There was a tape of Bugs Bunny cartoons that was called Big Top Bunny was the title of the tape, you know, that this was the headline for. But I don't understand why it's so popular, because I don't think it's as good as some of McKimson's other Bugs Bunnies from around the same time. I mean, a year later, you'd get Rabbit's Kin with Pete Puma, and a year before this, or maybe even the same year, you had French Rare Bits. This year, yeah. So, and those are very, very funny cartoons. Like Oily Hair is another one. Maverick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. This one, I, I don't think it's a misfire, but I don't think it's very funny, honestly. There's a couple of good bits. I love the anvil. Well, what you know about that? And I love the springs, you know, when Bugs Bunny puts springs on his feet, you know, that's pretty funny. Yeah, someone wants you on the phone. Here. Hello. Hello, Bruno. And the glass of water, you know, the diving into water bit. Which, again, is funny, but there's another cartoon that was made by Frizz Freeling. With Bugs Bunny against Yosemite Sam, you'll have to excuse the thunderstorm going on in the background as we record this. That thunderstorm is McKimson being upset at you not liking this short as much, I think. Right, right. <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry, Robert. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Mad respect for you, brother. <laughs> and, you know, the whole kind of one character trying to one-up the other, it's been done. And it was done better, I think, with Yosemite Sam in High Diving Hair. It was Frizz Freeling's cartoon. So, I don't know. It's, it's okay. 
Exactly. Uh, for me, the big comparison has to be with Acrobaty Bunny, which is a similar, like a circus-themed one where it's Bugs against the lion in, in that case. The lion, yes, yes. And oh. that one was his first Bugs Bunny, I think. That was McKimson's first Correct. Bugs Bunny cartoon. He kept kind of the same attitude that the Clampett Bugs Bunny had had at that point. And there are some people that say that may have been his best Bugs Bunny cartoon. I, I don't know if I agree with that, but it, it's good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but Kimson, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he's like it's not hillbilly hair, but anyway, <laughs> that's why that's so. So he's he's uh, he pretty much upset. But yeah, I definitely prefer Acrobat Buddy. This one has a few bits I liked. I mean, I do love the whole Colonel Corny. I don't know, just that name and just it's, yeah. It's and just he's, cool. he really looks like Colonel Sanders. I don't know if that was a thing. You know, I don't know if KFC and Colonel Sanders was a thing at the time this was made. But he's kind of a Colonel Sanders type. But with Bruno, though, I have to say, though, I mean, I love the voice that's done for this, and which, of course, is an imitation. And yeah. I love the shots where you see Bruno smile. He's got that, what I like to call the, the fake sh- uh, spotlight smile, where you know, he's yes. like, oh, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's nice. I just like it. I don't know. Yeah, it's a great character. Um, it, it's a shame that, A, this cartoon didn't have maybe the caliber of gags that would have made it you know, maybe more stand out. Of course, Mel Blanc, his ability to do accents is highlighted here. You've got his Bugs Bunny is like, of course, you know, a Brooklyn, you know, Bugs Bunny. And then you've got the Colonel Corny, the Southern Colonel. And then you've got this, this Russian bear, the Bruno. <laughs> and I think Blank is the only voice you hear in this cartoon. And it's a great performance by him, certainly. The character is funny. I would have liked to see Bruno again. Um, actually, I think he's a good character. I just, I just don't know if this cartoon really, you know, was a good showcase for him. Exactly. And speaking of voices, you know, I love how Bugs, uh, in these McKimson shorts, he would mispronounce things. And the best one here is, of course, the... Yeah, I'm ready, willing, and Mabel, partner. Ready, willing, and Mabel, partner. So instead of able... <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Ready, willing, and Mabel. <laughs> exactly. And of course, uh, I love the line. Hmm. Innocent as a newborn baby. Baby rat, that is. A newborn rat, that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Catch, catch me, Bruno. You know, yes. where he does that kind of sarcastic, you know. I, I do like McKimson's Bugs had a thing where that maybe even Jones and Freeling and the others didn't have. And that's just a sarcasm to it. You know, like, he knows he's a step ahead of the competition, and he just mocks them. He relentlessly trolls them, and, and it's like, I think McKimson actually encouraged Blank to put some sarcasm in it. Exactly right. And there are two gags in this short that make this short at least, you know, watchable, and you definitely got, gave me a few chuckles, even if it's not quite the best. So, first of all, I like that phone gag. It's like, hello. <laughs> and and I don't know if you noticed this particular touch. Now, you know when the drummer hits Bruno's stomach? that He does that. And then you see the drummer smiling after doing that. So, clearly, Bruno's, you know, is so up himself that he's probably <laughs> pissed off a lot of the people that he works with. You know, in this case, probably the drummer. Like, you actually hear that same drum line a second time after Bruno falls for trying to use the handlebars. For whatever reason, they don't show it. I just thought that was an interesting touch, but they don't do a third one because usually these gags are in threes, right? So right. I'm wondering... There's no the, payoff. Yeah. yeah. But, like, was there a, a, a cut gag maybe involved in the drama or maybe Bruno getting upset and he, and he t- takes the drummer's sticks away and hits him or something? You, you know what I mean? Like, that, that would make yeah. sense as a punchline. That would have been funny. Yeah. Mm, you know, rule of three. That's a classic comedy rule. The best gag for me is that increased challenge to dive down from the great height. And, you know, I guess something similar was Barbara Seville, where they're going up in the chairs. And, yeah. of course, uh, we got similar things uh, that Tex Avery would have done. But. Lightning just struck and flickered my computer, so. <laughs> wow. That, yeah. Maybe that was Tex Avery saying, I'm the best at doing that kind of gag, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, but, yeah, just the way Bugs deals with Bruno's ego, that's just great. And how, how Bugs is like, no, I'm going to dive on that cement block. No, I'm going to do it. I'm the star, you know. That's the <laughs> great way yeah. of, of dealing with that, which is which I think is uh, fantastic. <laughs> a good stunt. I'll buy that. But the star goes first. Here I go. Oh no, Bruno is the star. 
I go first. As for a score, this one's a bit tough because I don't hate this cartoon at all. It's perfectly serviceable. It's fine. If it's on TV, I'll watch it and yeah, we'll chuckle. But it's just compared to the other stuff that McKimpson did this year, like the one you mentioned before, French Rare Beards and all that, this one just pales. And of course, the prize pest, which is coming up, you know, I think that one's actually much better than this one as well. Uh, I don't know. See, if I give it a seven, I think that's about right. It's not a classic, but it's not a bad cartoon either. So I think seven out of ten, about right. What about you? What would you yeah. say with this one? I would say probably a six out of ten, I think. I think that's pretty fair you're probably in the same ballpark yeah yeah exactly and that's of course me keeps complaining again and there he is again <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it it's uh no, well actually it was, soft, it was softly spoken so he wouldn't be yelling at you so but in any case we'll wrap it up here thank you so much for watching and until next time take care <laughs>